In the past couple of weeks, we've seen the introduction of latent consistency models or LCMs and now Stable Diffusion XL Turbo, which are both new ways of supercharging the image diffusion game. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can use these with Stable Diffusion through Automatic 1111 and Comfy UI and some of the amazing things that are possible with these new models, mainly generating in real time. What's up, everybody? I am Phil Buck, your host for AI Roundup. It's a weekly digest of everything AI related. And the past few stories that I've done in a row have all been pretty serious stuff related to lawsuits and just kind of the heavier side of what's going on with the AI industry. Uh, but today I had to get back down into one of my favorite things to do, which is get my hands dirty, do some use case with the new tools that are out there. Uh, we're going to be talking about two different new tools. The first one, latent consistency models, which uh, is a model just just like any model you would use with stable diffusion, but people have actually been able to train what's called a LoRa uh, as a LCM. And so what's really cool about that is you're not having to take a full model, a, a new LCM and train it to do what you want. You can use all of your same models and just slot in an LCM uh, and it's going to take the render time down to one to four steps with Allura. But now Stability AI itself has uh, announced a new model. They call it SDXL Turbo, which is a little confusing because the preface of that SDXL would make you think it's the, the XL model, right? Which is trained on 1024 by 1024 resolution images. So the original SDXL that came out a, a while back can make bigger, higher resolution images. SDXL Turbo is not. It is trained on 512 by 512 images like most of the original stable diffusion models. Uh, but what really sets this model apart is they claim it is capable of rendering things in one step. So if you go check out Stable Diffusion's site, uh, they'll tell you all about the technology. They'll tell you that you can go test it out on ClipDrop. You can start typing stuff in and it will immediately show you pictures that will change uh, as you update the prompt, which is one of the aspects of this that is so exciting. Uh, be careful because I used up my credits or whatever uh, extremely fast by just you know typing stuff in and playing around. All right, and so for those that love to tinker, you can use these models extremely easily. Uh, to start with the LCM LORAs, uh, I'll put some links in the show notes, but you can just go download these LORAs, put them in your models, your subfolder LORAs in your models folder, and then just like always, add them into your prompt. And what you'll notice is that your images, if you don't change any settings, you'll notice your images get burnt really fast. Uh, and that's because these uh, new images are set up to be done in you know like four steps max. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, when you add in these LORAs, change your CFG and your steps way down. I would probably start around four steps and see how it looks. You can go all the way up to eight steps. I've seen some people doing. Uh, and make sure you crank that CFG way down. Normally I have mine set at about a seven, but I keep mine somewhere between one and two when you're rendering with this LoRa. Um, it is crazy what it can do. Uh, so the LCM lures are fantastic. They've been keeping me up late at night so I can keep playing with this stuff uh, into the wee hours of the night. Uh, but then just this week, earlier this week, and even uh, on Thursday, I'm recording this on Friday, uh, Stability AI announced uh, SDXL Turbo 2.1. So the model based on the 2.1 version of Stable Diffusion now also has a turbo version. And these are really exciting as well. I mean, they claim that they're able to be rendered in, you know, one step is, is what they, they claim. Now, I mean, the, the mileage may vary, results may, <laughs> may or may not, you know, meet your expectations. I mean, when you play with it on clip drop, you'll see exactly what I mean. Lots of weird stuff with uh, faces and eyes and, and the typical problems. But so if you want to add these in, I mean, uh, just literally go download the models, drop them in your folder, and you'll be able to select them from uh, your, once you refresh, you can select them from your model uh, directory. I think uh, one thing that's worth noting is that uh, if you're using Comfy UI over Automatic 11.11 at the time of this recording, uh, LCM is not built in as a sampler, but you can use LCM methods as a sampler in Comfy UI. So that opens up even more options for you. So now that you kind of get the idea of how to use these, how easy it is to get them into your workflow, let's talk about some of the crazy things that people are doing with these. Uh, first up, the, the first person I saw doing anything with these 
new models was a channel in enigmatic e the guy's always got some amazing tutorials he's always been using uh, stable diffusion in kind of a, a vfx uh, frame of mind so you're seeing lots of cool stuff of you know taking uh, tiktok videos reinterpreting them into video game characters well he did a tutorial uh, about a week ago about how to use uh, comfy UI with a webcam and it will interpret the images from your webcam in real time. Now, I mean, I'm putting it in air quotes because, you know, if you watch in the video, the, the frames are not, you know, like 30 frames a second. It's like maybe one frame every one or two seconds. So it's a little janky. It's not really in real time, but it is amazing that not only can you input a webcam and watch it interpret you, uh, but you can change the prompt as you're doing this and watching it um, update as you go, which brings me to another one, uh, a guy that I really enjoyed seeing what his techniques were with comfy UI, uh, Scott Detweiler. He took comfy UI. He laid out four different renderers and then he was typing the prompt, uh, and comparing each one of them with four different seeds. So he could do what like clip drop is doing on his own computer at home. And he could see how the prompt was slowly affecting, uh, the, the images that were rendered, you know, every, every word that he was typing was changing. it. It's pretty amazing. And then finally, this is a really cool one from Theoretically Media. It looks like it's another service called Crea, and uh, he has an open document where he's drawing and it's updating it in real time. It's really cool to see how even just flood filling the entire canvas with a color uh, starts generating things based on the prompt. And then you can kind of outline uh, wh what kind of figures or, or structures you want to see. I mean, this is just mind blowing to me. And uh, I mean, I think these tools are really going to open up a whole new subset of, of users that maybe haven't tried this stuff yet uh, and, and a whole new subset of applications that we can do. Sound off in the MMN Discord. If you're trying any of these out, let me know which ones you're liking the best. Let me see which applications you think are practical uh, for putting these into the workflow. And with that being said, that is our AI roundup for today. If you enjoy what we're doing here on the show, please help me out by liking this video. Go ahead and drop a comment and of course, sub to the channel. Uh, but also be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us at MSP Media TV everywhere. If you'd like to reach out, use our email news at mspmedia.tv or you can call us and leave a voicemail at 833-MSP-NETWORK. All right, everybody, I am Phil Buck, and this has been your De December 4th episode of AI Roundup. I hope you have a happy Monday, and I'll see you next time. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.